Hey guys, it's Pilot Bambi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're at the beautiful airport of Sitterdorf in Switzerland and I'm joined by Simon. And Thank Simon you. is a flight instructor here. Can you tell me what our plan is for today? Uh, the plan is as we are in Switzerland and we have mountains, we go to the mountains. So the plan is we go to a place which is called the uh, Hufifilm, which is a glacier, it's a large glacier. And we are going to do landings there which, because it's uh, an official landing mountain site there. So this is what we're going to do. Let's go! We will. <laughs> Once we have 15% RPM, you can put the hand here. The important thing is we need to have N1 RPM and the low uh, MGT before we can put the fuel cutoff uh, to on, because otherwise we, we get a hot start. Yeah. Here we go. We see the RPM rising, yeah. N1 rising. The MGT is below 150. The oil temperature, uh, the oil pressure is also, is also rising and the blades are turning. Yeah. And now we can put this one in. Bang. And keep the hand here, because now you watch the MGT, yeah. such that it doesn't exceed. So the engine starts, M1 is rising, oil pressure is coming, and then it should automatically stabilize at 65% yeah. yeah. uh, N1, which is now. The doors are closed, yeah. frictions off. I'll take the frictions off. Yeah. Now you check the hydraulic, yeah. that's the same as in the R44. Yeah. You and check if it's, uh, if it's uh, restricted exactly and then back on. Then you slightly li left lift the collective, which yeah. adds the horn to the, to the low RPM uh, light. And then you can open the throttle. And the important thing is that you need to be between about 25 and 50% uh, uh, torque. Here you need to be careful. Now the governor or the fuel control unit, which has, yeah. which has the governor included, has taken over. Now the throttle is fully open. Yeah. We aim for something like 98% in two, which we have. Yep. Uh, engine gauges, gauges normal. full, green, 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 green. So we are ready. Sitter off, good morning. Helicopter at the Bravo Zulu Alpha Sierra is lifting off at the helipad. Hover taxi holding short runway 25. It starts to move. It starts to become light. Exactly. Outstanding. 82 torque, RPM in the green, MGT 660, that's perfect. Nice. Now you can back up. Yeah. Helicopter Alpha Sierra is crossing on the axis proceeding sector Sierra. How does it feel? Really nice. I mean, it's so nice to step into a helicopter that has a lot of the same features as the R44 that I did all my training on. Absolutely. Um, so it's, I mean, it's an R44 with a turbine, basically. Yeah. But I loved the uh, engine startup, and now that I'm also training on the caravan, uh, I have some experience with the turbine. So it's cool to see very similar handling, but then in a helicopter. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say are the most important things to keep in mind when flying helicopters in this kind of area? In mountainous area? Yeah. And we, uh, we briefly discussed as well before, like the safety measures you have to take. Absolutely. I mean, if you fly in that region, uh, you can already see that it's not, it's not, you cannot land everywhere. So uh, in, in case you have a, like an engine failure or so, you already need to, to sort of uh, carefully choose your flight path. Yeah. To give you at least one or two options for, for not rotation should things go wrong. And then, I mean, if you go further up in the mountains, there are there are situations where auto rotation is at least difficult, if not impossible. Yeah. That's maybe the difference to countries like the Netherlands, which are which are very flat. And obviously, in the mountains, you also have all sorts of cables, from cable cars, small ones, big ones, etc. And cables, obviously, is always a risk for helicopters. Yeah. Lots of the transportation in the mountains is done by helicopters, uh, so these cables are, are a problem. Yeah. yeah. And the Flarm has a cable database included, so oh, it, also, nice. it also warns 
uh, for cables. Yeah, and then I mean the mountains. Once you have uh, once you have wind, you can obviously have orographic turbulence, meaning the wind that uh, uh, that is uh, deviated by the mountains. You can have all sorts of, uh, of uh, different winds and turbulence, uh, which for the two-bladed Robinsons, especially the smaller ones, can can be a problem. And here is also a mountain landing site. You can land somewhere here. Sometimes we land up there where the ridge is on the left side where, where you see the shadow of the cloud. Fantastic. So there, uh, we can wow. be sometimes, we sometimes land. And you also see that the snow is, uh, is all gone here, so yeah. you see the ice, uh, ice which, is, uh, which is coming up. Uh. What a pleasure to be flying with you, Rosita, and uh, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. We have a specific technique to land in the mountains, which consists basically of three parts. You do a recognition, so an assessment of the landing site yeah. in at least two phases. The first, what we call, is the high reco. So you go looking at the site from a, a higher altitude, yeah. just to assess how it looks and assess the basic wind direction and assess whether it's safe to go lower. A criterion would be, for example, if you experience or if you expect a lot of turbulence lower, if you go lower, then that would be an exclusion criteria because yeah. you don't want to fly in turbulence. So it can be you, you, that already the, the, the high up recognition uh, assessment of the landing site uh, comes out with the result we cannot land. Yeah. And if you have assessed this, so the wind is reasonable within 30 knots and from a reasonable direction and no turbulence and the landing side looks something like okay, then we do the low assessment. Yeah. And on the low assessment, you fly with exactly 30 knots over the landing site at and something like 10 meters or so. And then you read the power that yeah. you need, or the torque in yeah. that case. You read the torque that you need. And that gives you an indication if you have enough power to land there. Okay. Because you then take a certain margin of like torque, huh, which you need to be able to land. Yeah. And if you don't have that margin, or if you experience turbulence, or if the wind direction is not as anticipated, then you abort. Yeah. And then it's again an exclusion and you say, doesn't work. Yeah. The speed indicator is also depending on the, the density. Yeah. So we, need, we also need to, uh, to correct. And it's 2% per 1,000 feet. So we are at 10,000 feet, mixed 20%. So we have indicated something like 85 knots. Yeah. Plus 20%, uh, which would be something like 20 knots. Yeah, so or 15 knots maybe. So our current speed, actual speed, is 100 knots. Okay. And you can read now that the ground speed is 104 knots. So apparently here, very little wind. Yeah. And we also have a mountain frequency, yeah. which is 130 decibel 355, which we use for communication on all mountain sites. Hüvi Heli Alpha Sierra is approaching Hüvi from uh, Limbera, so from the east, for a high recon. So 90, 97 ground speed, so we definitely have wind yeah. coming from that direction. Some other people down there.
<laughs> so sick. <laughs> Should we try over there? <laughs> we go again and yeah. we try over there. <laughs> Is the place that I mentioned, huh? Wow! This is incredible. So it is there you can walk over to the hut, but now we go back to the other place okay. where you can uh, step out in the snow. Winter. Okay, it doesn't get much better than this, huh? <laughs> And we're on a glacier. This is absolutely incredible. Like, <laughs> look around. <laughs> <There's no laughs> <fighters being. laughs> so we did one approach here, and Simon landed it. Then we land. He landed on top at the little uh, hut there. And um, I don't think we could have wished for any better weather than this. Mr. Cameraman Director, what do you think of this <laughs> outing? Can't get enough of it. Big heli party up on the mountain. We're gonna see what our friends over there are doing. It's a good lunch. Buns have never tasted so good. Two paragliders having fun, which we're doing this afternoon as well. So we made fun of your outfit choice, but... Your shorts are okay. It's the shoes. Mm. Now my feet are a bit wet. Man, I'm really the only one prepared, huh? <laughs> incredible lunch on this magnificent spot and uh, now we're ready to head back home unfortunately but we're gonna do a beautiful takeoff and uh, booyah! <laughs> you just missed me! to those that are considering doing a helicopter um, mountain racing? Well, as we have mountains uh, in Switzerland, um, and as the helicopter is probably not made to fly straight and level from A to B, which I consider being boring, <laughs> then uh, the mountain rating is, uh, I would say, almost a must in Switzerland. And for the helicopter pilot, I would say it's a considerable and important step in its in his career, Crucial. because it's on another level. Yeah, it's a, it's another environment. It's a difficult environment. It's an environment that changes rapidly. It needs uh, it needs different additional techniques to learn. You need uh, you need a certain structure, a, system, a certain systematic to do that to uh, to remain safe. Mountain flying involves uh, risks that need to be controlled. But once you have that, you get something that is more valuable than just for the mountain. You're learning the limitations of your helicopter, of your machine. Yeah. You're learning the impact of the weather, and as we saw, the impact of the, 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 the altitude on the performance. Although Absolutely. with this turbine, it's still fantastic. But uh, yeah, and at Haley Academy, you guys offer the mountain racing on the R66. Yes, we do. And any other helicopters as well? Yes, the R44 uh, is also is also quite suitable. Just 
to quickly make you an example how we train outside landings. So imagine we want to land nearby that hut there. Yeah. So we assess the wind direction, say it comes from here or it's low, so we land from there. Yeah. Uh, there is a systematic. We're now something like 500 feet above, so maybe it's 3,000 or so. So let's check. There are no obstacles or only a few obstacles there. Power, we have enough. So let's land nearby that house there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We train that on PPL level wow. with, uh, with people. We'll be a bit confined. So what we do in confined areas is approach slowly, check the power that we use, which is not a problem on the R66. And then once the tail is clear, slowly come down. And then also an opportunity to uh, train slow landings. <laughs> wow! So this is uh, this is how we do it. I've been here with a with a trainee a few days ago. So so cool. Tail is clear. So how do we get out? A vertical departure, huh? Maybe in that direction. The wind is uh, is weak, but it's quite hot. Huh? So you just pull the power. Yeah. Anti torque. Until you can see that we can fly forward. Go forward. And leave the confined area. Go slightly to the left to avoid the house. So this is uh we train helicopter pilots in Switzerland awesome. for that kind of sites. That is the field of the helicopter. Try to do this with an aeroplane. <laughs> Helio Alpha Sierra Sector, Sierra at 3000 feet, the next hover taxi holding short on A25. You can fly over these flowers, uh, over that flowery thing. Yeah, a bird. Exactly. Slow down because we need to hold short of the runway, exactly. And now you can stay on this altitude. Okay, cool. Right clear, left clear. Heli Alpha Sierra is crossing runway axis, proceeding to the helipad, high hover. Outstanding. Bit more forward. Bit more, bit more. The skids are on the level of your knees. Excellent, good here. Nice. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations, Alita. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you so much. Wow, this was really, really, really cool. I think I'll be back soon. I'm looking forward. She did really, really well. <laughs> thank you. Really, really well. I can't thank you enough. I thought this, I must say this was the coolest flying that I've ever done in my life. I think the guys behind the camera agree. Um, thank you very much. And it was we're a pleasure. All very impressed by uh, the beautiful scenery of Switzerland. And, uh, thank you. Thank you for taking us along on this trip. Come back soon. We will. And uh, for everybody who wants to know where we are, it's uh, Haley Academy. And uh, it might be the most beautiful place that you'll ever learn to fly.